I don't know about you, but the best feeling in golf to me is when you outdrive your buddy. I'm telling you, when I'm playing with Clay and I outdrive him or he outdrives me, my day is just so much better. I don't even care if he beat me. My day is just a heck of a lot better if I outdrive him a lot more than he outdrives me. I see a lot of people trying to get more power and they're falling for all these things out there, these claims, you do this, you're gonna get a lot more power and so on and so forth. But the reality is there's really one thing that gets you a lot more of your power than anything else but it's not the most sexy thing in the world, so not everyone is really going for it, and that is winding up your body. That's really what we have to do. We have to get our hips turning, we have to get our shoulders turning, we have to get everything wound up and create lots in space and time to accelerate the club, and if you do that, you can create a lot of speed at the bottom of the swing. Think about this, if you were going sledding, which some of you this time of year might be going sledding, not here in Florida, but other places. Uh, if you're going sledding, you were trying to have the most speed at the bottom of the hill, what would you do? Would you try and find the tallest and steepest hill, or would you try to find the flattest um, and shortest hill? You would try to find the steepest and tallest hill because you're gonna be able to have tons of time to pick up speed at, at the bottom. And it's the same thing we wanna do in the golf swing. And it starts from the ground up. So what I want you to do here, and I'm telling you, if you get this right, it's inevitable. You, you can't help but to have a lot of power um, in, in the swing. It's just gonna be a heck of a lot easier to do it. So let's start from the ground up. What I want you to do is grab an alignment stick and a club or, or another alignment stick. So you can use two alignment sticks. And what I want you to do is I want you to first take this club and put it at about a 45 degree angle. All right, so that's half of 90 degrees, about a 45 degree angle. And then just a little bit more. And the reason why I say a little bit more is because that would be about 50 degrees. 50 degree hip turn is about a magic number that I like to see. When I see people come short of that, they don't have as much speed and distance. And when I see people go further than that, sometimes there's a point of diminishing returns. Now, I encourage you to play around with it, but 50 is a good number that I like to see. So put it at a 45 degree angle and then give it a little bit more to give it a 50 degrees. Now what I want you to do is take that alignment stick and put it through your belt loops. If I can find my belt loops here. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna give you a great indication of how much your hips are turning. So put it through those front two belt loops and now you can see if I turn my hips, I'm gonna be able to, uh, this is gonna give me feedback on exactly um, what I'm doing here. So like I said, it starts from the ground up. When I see people struggling, it's because they're really locking in their hips, right? And there's been some past instruction, right, where we've been told, you know, don't, you know, don't turn the hips, keep them locked in, keep the knees locked in and all those things, but that just leads to not a lot of speed. If you look at a lot of the great players, they're not doing that, right? Look at old swings of Jack Nicklaus. He is not, his feet are coming off the ground, his knees are, are unflexing, his hips are turning a ton. You know, if you look at Tiger, he's doing the same thing. So we don't want to be restricting these things. We want to have freedom of, of movement. That's how we're going to be able to create lots and space and time to accelerate the club. So again, you're going to set up with this at roughly about 50 degrees, and I want you to put it right in front of your uh, trail foot there. Now, what I want you to do is go to the top of the swing and see how much those are turning. So if I, if I set up like this with my feet squared off, I keep my feet on the ground, and I just turn as much as I can, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting anywhere near that, right? And that's because I'm not flexible. Not all of us are flexible. I'm not very flexible in my hips. So I need to make adjustments with my stance and what I'm doing in order to get my hips to get to that magic number of 50. So I imagine a lot of you are, are in that situation or you're, you may be in that situation as well. So what I want you to do is flare these feet out. I know it may be aesthetically pleasing to have those feet straight point straight forward, but unless you have a lot of flexibility in your hips, it's gonna be difficult to do that. Imagine if I set up pigeon toed, right? I can't hardly turn at all if I do that. So I need to set up flare. You can have as much as 45 degrees of, of foot flare here. So flare those things out. Now if I flare those things out, now I can actually get pretty much on that number, right? I can get pretty much on that number. Now when I do that, look what's happening, right? I'm straightening out my trail leg. I am not keeping it flexed. If I keep it flexed, I cannot move my hips. So I need to straighten out my trail leg. 
And then I also, I'm letting this knee turn in. A lot of people I see, uh, a lot of instruction I'm seeing is they're saying, keep that knee out, right? Well, if you do that, it's going to restrict your hip turn and restrict all your power. So go ahead and let that kick in. Again, look at those players I was talking about. Jack Nicholas, Bubba Watson. You know, these guys, they're turning that leg in. You know, the guys that aren't doing that, that have a lot of power, one would be Dustin Johnson. He's extremely flexible. Not all of us are gonna be that flexible, right? So we need to kick that in. Another thing that we can do is we can allow this heel to be pulled off the ground. So now look, if I turn, if I flare my feet out, I let my trail leg straighten, I let my trail or my lead knee kind of kick in a little bit, and I let my heel get pulled off the ground, now look how much more I can turn. I can really get this past that. So I want you to experiment with that and see how much of a, of a hip turn you can get from this position. Like I said, there are points of diminishing returns, but this, if, if you can get to that 50 by doing that, I've never seen anyone, I've worked with a lot of golfers, uh, and I've never worked with anyone that if they've, if they've done these things, they've flared their feet out, they've let the legs straighten and flex, and they've, and they've really uh, let that heel come off the ground, I've never seen anyone not able to get to 50 degrees. Never seen it. So I'm guessing, I'm, I'm sure it's certainly possible, but I'm saying that it's not likely that you're not able to get to this number. I think everyone can really get to this uh, 50 degree uh, mark, all right? So if you make these adjustments, now you can get that club back, you can create all that space, and now it's just inevitable. You're gonna have lots of power um, in your swing, okay? Now, when I'm doing this, what I also wanna make sure of is that I'm not turning this level like this. So see, if I, if I turn like this, and I turn it level, my shoulders are gonna get level, I'm gonna stand up, and from here, I'm, it's basically early, what I would call early, early extension. You know, early extension a lot of times happens in the downswing, but early, early extension would be what I would call you know, early extension in the backswing, so it's even earlier, right, where we're kind of standing up and we get level, and then from there, we're just gonna kind of throw the arms from there. So we need to make sure that when we're turning our hips that we have this angle down a little bit, right? So in order to do that, what I want you to feel like when you're turning your hips in order to stay nice and centered as well, like we see all the best players, what I want you to do is I want you to feel like you are pushing into the ground with your trail foot, and I want you to be pushing your tailbone toward the target. So when I do that, again, I'm gonna be straightening out my trail leg, I'm gonna be kicking that, that trail leg, excuse me, I keep saying trail leg, the lead, the lead knee in, letting that heel come off the ground, and now you can see I've got this kind of angled down a little bit, right? And that's gonna allow me to stay in my posture really nicely, and then be able to make a proper move in the start of the downswing. So work on this, work on getting that hips to that magic number, right? And then take, the, take some swings, you know, where you can see that kind of out of the corner of your eye here and see if you can match it up to the stick and try to hit some balls. You can hit some balls with this on for sure. You know, so you can even point it out a little bit more out of this side if you're afraid of it hitting over here. And you can really try to clear that out of the way as you're coming down. It could be a good drill to also help you kind of clear the hips a little bit. So get that where it needs to be, kind of pointing down and more than, than 45 degrees, and then clearing it out of the way and turning through the ball. I'm telling you, it's, it's gonna be inevitable. You're gonna have lots of speed and plenty of distance from there. So work on that, then get to where you can do it without the stick in there, and you'll be well on your way to hitting much longer drives and out driving your buddies. Now this is the very beginning. This is really the number one thing that I see to help players get more speed. But another thing, the next best thing that's gonna help you to get more speed is getting some lag in the start of the downswing, right? So when I get up to the top, I wanna start getting this club to kind of lag behind me. Now I've got all this stored energy here and I can then release that on the ball. If I'm coming down the start of the downswing and I'm unloading all my energy right here, I don't have anything left by the time it gets to the golf ball, no matter how much I turn my shoulders and turn my hips. So make sure that you're getting some lag in the swing as well. So I have a great bonus video for you where Clay Ballard, the founder of Top Speed Golf, is gonna go over the pirate ship, the pirate ship uh, drill with you where he's gonna tell you how to get that really good lag in the swing. So if you wanna see a preview of that video, just stick around, but if you wanna see the whole video, just click the i-card that's gonna appear up on your screen here in a second, or if you don't see the i-card, no worries, just click the link in the description below. Play well, hit some bombs, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, so let's jump right in to one of my favorite videos I've ever done on lag, one of the ones I've seen the best results with, 
And we'll talk in a minute why this is called pirate ship, but it's really a play on a wide, narrow, wide drill or a wide, narrow throw drill that I've done in the past and have tons of success yeah. with. So if in the backswing, my club head kind of at parallel to the ground was say a good five, six, maybe even seven feet away from the center of my body. And the downswing, it's much closer to my body. That's the narrowing part because I have this big angle of lag. And then I throw all that out in front, really let those arms extend and I go wide again. Now, a lot of times I'll see players misinterpret this drill and they take a really good drill that's having tons of success and they do it the wrong way and they really struggle with it, feel like a lot of hands and arms. So if you've done this drill in the past and you feel a little bit out of sequence, you feel like your hands and arms just aren't working right, I bet this is exactly what you did. So when you're going wide in the backswing, that's all good. Most people get that correct. You really gotta rotate the body. But when they narrow, the misrepresentation that a lot of players will have is they'll narrow up the arms, not the club head that we want to narrow, but they'll misinterpret this drill as narrowing the arms and they'll do something like this. I want you to think of your arms as a pirate ship. Here's what I mean by that. You've probably been to an amusement park before where they have one of these big giant pirate ships. Everybody's packed on there in these seats. And then the pirate ship is down at the bottom. There's a big arm. And then that arm starts swinging back and forth just like a pendulum, right? And the ship goes back and forth. Well, the cool thing about this that you can relate to your golf swing